I was in uh, Best Buy several months ago, and um, I saw a display now that they have right as you go in, in between the computers on the right, uh, TVs in the back, appliances on the left, control or connect to your home, smart home this, smart home that. And I was thinking, you know, being the club historian, and not being the club historian, I, there's really a history to this. It just didn't happen overnight. It's just not because of the, the Android phones or the iPhones or any of that. This stuff is not new, as Cass will attest to. Right, Cass? None of this is really new. It gets recycled or it takes on a different uh, shape. shape. So I'd like to take us back a little bit. But before we do, I don't know if you can see that, but um, Food and <laughs> the things we're going to be talking about are connecting your lights to your computer, to your phone, to your wrist, who knows. Uh, appliances, switches, timers, fan controllers, learning thermostats. Uh, some, of, some of us in the club have Nest. Anybody in this room have Nest? Okay, we'll, we'll touch upon that a little bit later. Um, we have door openers, garage door openers from, from your car. You can press a button, open your door. Anybody have one of those? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, we have security cameras. Anybody have any of those? Nobody in the business that needs, it, needs them? Nope. Uh, We've always had wake on computers as long as I can remember. Uh, you can have your computer turned off and then you can send a signal to your computer somehow, some way, and it can turn on. And we have now mood enhancers. That's the coolest one of them all. That one was new to me. That, that I don't remember, you know, 20 years ago. They were given a little brown bottle. <laughs> <laughs> We, we know your history, Andy. No, you can always change your mood. We know your head and we know your history. So first a little history, 1978. Um, I've got to bring my props. I, I have these still. The X10, the VSR, the modules that you, you uh, plug into your outlet. And uh, this is one down here. This is the... I'm still using those. I still use them too. I'm still using I'm, I'm, that, that's the point. That's the point. I'm still using them. In fact, my father is using them. My father is in assisted living. He's 101 and a half years old. He can't turn the lights on. You know, they, they, they turn the lights and, and they turn the light switch off, and then he can't use his remote. I mean, we leave the switch on, and then he has a button he presses, and it uses, I believe, ultrasonic. I may be wrong about the technology, but we'll, we'll see that some of this stuff is still around. That's why I wanted to take you back. 1978, we had X10s, BSR, use household power lines. That is, the you plug the module into your outlet, and it used the power line in your house. And on your um, button, you had an on and off switch, or you had a dimmer controller, Exact controller, and I have a setup to. Uh, I have candles in all my windows, and it runs all the candles. Oh, cool, cool. And uh, I can also, t I also have an X10 uh, security light by the garage door that I can use that for. And then there's a, you use one of the buttons that when you press it, it'll turn all the lights. Yeah, there's there's a there's an all on. Yeah, the, this one has. Uh, uh, if I. I can't blow this up, but it has these four buttons here. I think it controls four outlets. And then one of these is maybe an all on, and one of these is an all off, something like that. Well, I started out, I had a, a light in the back of the house, and there was no switch. So that's how I started out with this. I was able to turn it off and on with one of these. Mm -hmm. You know, Heaskin developed, uh, uh, I built one of the gadgets, so you could, you could control your only Rex 10 
devices from your computer by a serial port. That's that's what I'm going to get to, Cass. You're you're ahead of me. I didn't have a Heath kit. Yeah. Um, I had what is this? A TRS-80, a Radio Shack, Coco, or color computer, color computer, color computer, color computer, circa 1980s. And on the side of the computer, there was an opening which took a game port, uh, which was a game port, which took a game module. You could play chess, you could play other kinds of games, but you could also put in a uh, a device for controlling your appliances and your lights. I have that. Okay. And when I run, I have a, uh, an old laptop from the late 80s that runs this software. It's um, called Lighthouse. And it runs on uh, <laughs> Microsoft or Windows Workroom. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. we're, we're really going back now. Now, I think that Coco just ran basic, but there was also an OS9, if any of you remember, that was a fairly sophisticated multitasking type software. And this is in the 1980s. And this, this cartridge was a ROM. What do I mean by ROM? Read-only memory. Read-only memory. So it, it was limited to what it could do. But once you put it into the computer, the computer then would be, a, there would be a program running off the ROM it would allow you to do things that would time your appliances, like you have programmable thermostats these days, well you could do it on your computer. That's essentially what the program would do. And then you would have the, the modules that would be connected to your, uh, your, your, um, your appliances or your lights will be connected to your, your modules in your outlet, or you'd have switches on the, on the wall. So this was in the 1980s. And this is what it. Radio Shack used to carry all kinds. Of yeah, and, and and this this is what it looked like. So you had you had your computer. You had your um, modules, running through the house wiring. Your monitor, those days was your TV. Ran off a um, a a game TV switch. Uh, and then you had some sort of controller. Um, there was a joystick little thing with a, essentially it was a cursor, left, right, up, down, it would, it would move things on the computer screen or however the program was controlled. Like a shifter, like, like a trackpad. Yeah, like, like a track, like a trackpad or, or, you know, whatever. And each, whoops, wrong one, I'm missing something here. What did, what did that, something like that cost back in those days? Uh, the computer, are you talking about the computer, computer. Or, or, or the modules? The modules weren't that expensive. The modules were not that expensive. But the whole system, the modules, the computer. The computer was... I want to say the controller was like 150 bucks. I, I would not say the, more than that. And not the say more than that, yeah. like 10 bucks. Yeah, I would not say more than that, yeah. And the, and the program was probably 50 to 75 dollars. The, yeah. the program was not an expensive program. Uh, you did need a separate, uh, they, they called it plug and power module. It needed a separate module for appliances versus lights versus switches. And I think there was a certain warning you couldn't use it with certain kinds of lights, fluorescence or. Fluorescent, yeah. yeah. But the other thing besides the, the module you showed, they sold the whole outlet. So you, you take the out, your existing outlet out and then you put a new one in. And one of the outlets is just like a module, the other one's free electrical outlet. I see. Okay, once you programmed your computer to the remotes, uh, there was a command center controller that could take over to simply override the on and off. And so the computer could be disconnected. The computer was used to set it up. And once you set it up, you could remove the, com the computer out of the system here, and you're good to go. Now, later in the 80s, this is personal, uh, maybe early 90s, I had one of these devices. From home, I could call my office and turn on my computer or turn off my computer. Uh, because in those days, you know, we were running these, these uh, hard drives that were 
the kind of drive that if it crashed, it literally crashed because you had to take the head and move the head to track zero, to park it, remember those days? And if it didn't do that, the head would come down on, on the platter and literally you would crash your computer. So we were very protective of, of our hardware. So I would call my office and turn my computer on to do whatever I wanted to do. Um, and as Bill Chris would often say, you see where we're going? <laughs> we had to um, connect by way of a 300 baud modem. That's all I had. 110 baud. 110, well, that was my first. This one, I don't think I could. Couplers. Yes, I, and I, I won. Rabbit ears. I, I won one of those at the Train Computer Festival. I still have it. Cat, I think it was a cat. Cat, cat. One of those. I figured what, what does the C stand for? What I got from work. A couple of cooks told me when I took it home, make sure you don't play any games. <laughs> now, now, the programs I used to control my computer back in those days were PC Anywhere and Carbon Copy. I believe PC Anywhere is still around. Yeah, PC Anywhere is still around. Yeah. PC Anywhere, the, you, you hear the advertisements. Right. Now there was other program that we used around here uh, at, in the club called Net Meeting. That has uh, been retired as of I think 2012. Net Meeting was part of Windows. You got Team Team. Well, Team Viewer is, is not part of Microsoft, but Net Meeting was part part of Windows. And um, Procom, PC Talk. Yep. Yep. Remote yep. Desktop. Remote Desktop. Yep. So you could call. And you could turn off, on and off your heat. I never did that. I mean, that, that was uh, something I never did, but you could do that. So the smartphone, basically, guys, gals, is not really new. We, have, we still have the manual light switches, lamps, fan controllers, still available, Radio Shack, Sears, Home Depot. Home Depot has a big display of this stuff now. <laughs> The device up there with the little clicker. Yeah, I got one. Yeah, of those. yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and I still use it. And and this goes this goes into your your outlet, and yeah. you plug in your your lamp into the base here. I use it for my Christmas lights. And that that's your remote. Okay, so there's really nothing nothing new. Uh, the home link device here, um, which is your garage door opener, I believe uses RF. Not not absolutely 100 percent sure of the technology. Uh, so we're talking about, I believe, ultrasonic sound waves, at least to transfer are. from here to here, um, going through the power lines. I remember reading about it one time. It puts another um, signal on the, the 120 sine wave, and that's how somehow it is able to do its thing. But beyond that, I don't remember the, the technology. So we have. Uh, sound waves, we have radio frequency waves. And that's right about the RF for the garage. Okay. All right, so close, but I may not be precise. So now we're talking about the smart home, connected home, and really the reason why we have it in a different uh, view these days is because of the phone. The phone has made the difference now. So this is, um, this is Best Buy's um, home page and we're not connected, you say? No, we're not. So we're not going to really be able to go out to the internet, but we'll see all the players here. And um, what they're doing now is whatever your phone is, your phone can connect the security cameras it can control thermostats, smart thermostats. Now, you were asking about Nest. Nest is a big player with these um, thermostats, and Nest claims that it can learn your behavior. So, that you can, yeah, you can set it, you can program it like a normal thermostat uh, for when you get up, if you're not there during the day, when you go out, when you come back, uh, when you're home at night, you can, you can set it for different temperatures. I have a programmable thermostat and I leave it in one setting basically. <laughs> but I don't have a Nest. A Nest is kind of a learning um, program that you can control from your smartphone over Wi-Fi or cellular 
And when it gets to your home, I guess it's uh, Wi-Fi. Is that how it works? Guys who know the technology? Nobody's sure? I think it uses a combination cellular, but once it gets to your house, it's going to be Wi-Fi within your house. So, um, sounds logical. It sounds logical. <laughs> no, except you can do it over Wi-Fi. You don't need it. You don't even need. You don't even need cellular. Okay. But if you don't have. But, but if yeah, you don't, I think if you don't have a Wi-Fi, uh, let's say you're traveling in the car, I believe you can still use. If you do, it's going to get converted to Wi-Fi someplace. Yes, yes. Because your router doesn't understand cellular. That's 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 right. So that's right. See, I, I'm not sure. That's over a whole bunch of adult beverages. <laughs> is the is the phone driving this technology, or is the phone being pushed by a lot of the communication standard upgrades? You know, you talk about a 110 watt modem or an acoustic coupler, and now you get up into the 802.x and the security, the speed, Bluetooth. Every device now has something to do with Bluetooth. You don't even have to be on a cellular network. So, yeah, I don't know if it's the phone that's that's pushing this, or it happens to be their convenient marketing tool. But it seems that the the communication protocols that have been around in you know various forms for decades is probably as responsible, more responsible for this technology. It's not a cutesy thing to market, you know, oh, well you have 802 dot, you know, you're running over a G network instead of an X network or a N network. Wonderful. Yeah. And what's Bluetooth? You, you can't explain Bluetooth. <laughs> it's just there. There's no like USB communication. USB 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. There's near field communication. The slowest. Bluetooth. Right. There's other speeds as well. But they're just a means to end. Exactly. My point is it the the phone that's driving this smart home, connected home, or is it more a product of the advances in the the communication media? Well, the smartphone is sort of a convenient control center. And that's what they are trying to say. It can be a remote right. software. It's a convenient center pushing. So, so the smartphone becomes a general control. It's convenient, and that's what they're pushing. Yeah. Well, some of the big players now um, are, well, Nest is a big player. And I is think Google, Nest didn't thing? Google buy Nest? Yes. As in Nest. Yeah. Didn't Google yeah, buy Nest? $300. Okay, so Google is a big player. Uh, Google is going to be an even a bigger player with com competition now with, uh, what do they call their their um, wireless, uh, not the wireless, but their cable um, fiber, they call fiber, is that what they're calling it now? They're, they're going to be competing with Comcast and Verizon uh, with fiber. So being able to bring TV into your home and why not bring in your control of your home. So it's it's either a push or a pull. I, I, I can't answer that. Yeah, I, I don't know. The other big player is uh, Belkin. Belkin has a, uh, is this the Wemo? Wemo, W-E-M-O, I think this is Wemo. Yeah, W-E, it's W-E over M-O. It's Wemo, and that's a big player. What does Belkin do? Belkin makes all kinds of junk. <laughs> But they also make Toys, but they also make routers. Yes, they make wireless routers. They're never they're never considered in, in, at the level of Linksys and uh, others. But uh, they do make they do make uh, routers. Panasonic, uh, Samsung is in in the game. Uh, Honeywell, Honeywell makes a smart thermostat. Um, these are the big players and um, 
it all goes back to this interconnectivity that the network has been interfaced with the phone. Instead of using my phone and my teleresponder, instead of using something like this, I had I had to I lift up the uh, the the, uh, the top here, and the teleresponder could be programmed with a an access code, so that if I called in with with touch tone, I could give it a code, to, so nobody could do the turning on of my equipment unless they knew the code. I had no hacking back in those days, didn't have to worry about that. With the phone, I would be concerned a little bit about that. I would, be, and people are concerned now, especially with security cameras, I'm hearing it all the time. The first thing you want to do with a security camera, if it's on an IP address on your network, is to change the default password. Otherwise, you're not only your neighbor, but um, your wannabe neighbor can, can, can check out your house. So um, let's just add to the discussion if anybody has any other input, because uh, this is my venture into Best Buy, and, and I see all this stuff, and I'm wondering, do I or don't I? And some of it I do, my some of it I don't. My son. Uh, got involved with the cameras. They had doggy cam. And oh, yeah. then doggy cam got paired with, you know, the dog, you know, back and forth with the back. And instead of running on with luck to check on the dog, so doggy cam came about. And then baby cam joined doggy cam. <laughs> and even my daughter-in-law have apps on their phone. But he started with the basics of all the security taken care of. He's forgotten more about the security than I could ever hope to know about it. So I think I think he's the exception compared to most people going out now that are just going to Amazon or going to the Best Buy and picking something up. You mentioned the default password it was within the past month. And they were talking about some phenomenal percentage, 50, 60 percent, where they still have the default password. <laughs> wow. So, um, and I th the comment that was at the bottom of your first slide, was it? Is... I want to make a comment about what you said about the password. Um, when I got Fios, they recommended that I didn't change the password. Yeah, the site that Verizon you know, agent. And um, I was skeptical oh, yeah. about that. Then I noticed some things with my computer that made me a little suspicious. So I said, I don't really care what Verizon has to say. Yeah. I'm changing this. It might have been on Steve's presentation. It was down at the bottom about the, uh, the internet in 2015. Yeah, we'll see that. Yeah. Um, yeah, security is, is... I just set up the Linux router for somebody and I noticed that, number one, they weren't using 192.168 as the default internal mm -hmm. plan uh, IP address. They were using something included here. And they also had a very complex password that says default. It's no longer admin password. And I suspect some of the other manufacturers might start doing the same thing. They'll put in a complicated thing because they know most people won't bother. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to have to deal with consequences. When I got the new router and the cable modem, it came with its own password to a random sequence of uh, letters and numbers. Yeah. And each unit comes with a different one. You can change it. But the default is it's not just admin, it's some um, complicated sequence. The, pro the problem with what you're talking about with people not changing the passwords, uh, not this last show, but the, 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 uh, the hacking show uh, on WBAI, I, I, I went to, to my little... What is it? Off the hook. 
I went to, I went, uh, they did a demonstration um, on uh, passwords and things that people can do. And they, and there was a company, and it was like maybe only one or two companies that did this, the security company where um, they set up, um, um, I don't know if you guys remember it, there's still some around where you have a, a, a keypad and it just looks like, like a telephone pad, yeah. okay? Yeah. And there was a company that was, you know, in charge of the security. And they would install these things with, with their generic password. Come to find out, nobody ever changes the password. And the guy did, did, you know, did a demonstration of, you know, how they went into this secure area and they did this. Well, he gave out the information for that code. And I, I, I wrote it down, and I, ha and I have a friend who's a pharmacist, and they have one of those in the pharmacy. And I gave him the code, and I said, don't try this without telling your supervisor first. And he tried it, and I'll be damned if it didn't open up the gate. Nobody changed the code. In the pharmacy? In the pharmacy. Uh, I find that, like, the is like treasury. They say you buy treasury bonds and notes, etc. When you sign in on your, on your computer, you get, they send you a talk keyboard. Now that you have your, a, a, a different keyboard that appears every time you sign in, and you put your password into, you click on the keyboard. And this is, seems to be a very good uh, security. In other words, even though if somebody would catch your entries, next time you sign in, there's a completely different keyboard because you, there'll be a different uh, sequence. Okay, I see some people getting restless and ready to leave. Let me, let me just wind up with uh, uh, Steve's title here was kind of misleading or leading to perhaps something else. He says, the Internet of Things. And really, we are talking about things. However, this last thing I put, it's not really a thing. This last thing I put down here, Mood Enhancer, is not simply a thing. I mean, it is a thing, but it's really affecting our life, as all these other things are. But it's affecting our life in almost a... Uh, Zen kind of way. You'll like this. And that is Hugh. I think Phillips is involved with that. Phillips um, makes light bulbs. You get a blue light. If you feel want to be blue or you know, subdued. You get a red light if you want to be well not him. Light. Right. <laughs> 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 but what, what they're saying is... I'm just talking about his red light. <laughs> <laughs> but what they're saying is that the different color lights affect our moods, are affecting our behavior. So this is not only interfacing with, yes, I can feel warmer in my house, I can feel com more comfortable in my house, but that comfort is not a thing, it's a result of the thing. And this mood is not a thing either, it's a result of a thing. So this is a change, Real. This is a. I think this is a major change, and perhaps this is not a change either, because the computer's kind of changed our behaviors too. So I look at it as kind of a, another kind of interface. It, it's like we have the thing, and in between us and the thing is this ether, and this ether is something but you can explain it better than I can. <laughs> you talk this language, it's right? It's right up there with the, with the chicken or the egg. You know, right? the, the communications or the device. That's right. What's helping? For years, they've talked about uh, sundowner syndrome and seasonable affective disorder. Uh, that's right, sad, well, right. Okay, and then the lighting companies picked up on that, and now they're turning Mar around. But that's and, marketing. Right, exactly. <laughs> and... You get enough buy it, it's one chasing the other. This gets proposed, somebody does a study and says, yes, this is right. The 
corporations go after it with their marketing thing, which supports more and... Now, you'll be able to go out to this website when you get home because, um, you, first of all, you can, go to, you can go to Best Buy and punch in uh, your connected home. But w when, you, when you go to each one of these, so each one of these is a, uh, a link. There is the video monitoring, which um, this is security cameras. You all seem to know that. And that's the smart heating and, and alarms. They, they're tied in with security alarms. Uh, there is Wemo, which is tied in with Bel uh, Belkin. There is the Hue. And the Hue has a little video there that you will probably enjoy because it shows the different colors with different kinds of activities that a typical family might do during the day. The only thing is, you know, if you're colorblind or, or if you're, you're sensitive to different lights, if the lights flicker, uh, you can trigger other problems, right? Okay. I actually use an LED that changes color, and you can let it go through, or you can pick whatever color you want. Yeah, yeah you have to, with the flickering, think, you have I to think watch this, this, this is based on LED. This yeah. is based on LED technology. You've read with the flickering lights, you have to worry about epilepsy. Yes, yeah, 12, to 12 cycles per second or something. And something right with fluorescence, too. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are bothered because of the, the gas gives you that. My grandkids bought this Nest Learning Thermostat. Programs itself connects to their precious phones. I don't like it. Being cold builds character. Walking back and forth to the thermostat builds leg muscles. When the internet's come to life and all these gizmos turn on us, these kids won't be able to run away on those shriveled little calves. Will they love their Nest Thermostat then? I don't think so. The Nest Learning Thermostat. Welcome to a more thoughtful home.